So remember that we need the load length and the store conditional to behave like a single atomic instruction so that writes by other processors cannot come in between them without us knowing. Well, this is how it happens. We do a load length from a lock variable to R1. And then we do a store conditional of R2 into the lock variable. And what we need is that if the load link finds the lock available and we try to do a store conditional, then the store conditional should only succeed if the lock is still available at the time we try that. If somebody else has written into the lock, then store conditional needs to fail. And the key for that is that if we snoop a write to lock var at any time, we put a zero in the link register. So if the load link loads the lock variable and we see that it's free and we try to do a store conditional but somebody beats us to it, then the store will fail because it will observe that the link register doesn't match the address of the lock var. So the load link store conditional really are relying on the coherence where we observe write by others to make sure that if the store conditional succeeds, it can guarantee that nobody else grabbed the lock between when we check the lock and when we think we grabbed it, really by writing a busy value into it. Now note that the load link store conditional are atomic by themselves. We don't need actually to use a lock to make this atomic. So some of the critical sections that would just lock something, increment a variable, and then unlock the lock can now directly be implemented using load link and store conditional on the variable itself. By load linking the variable itself into R1, incrementing R1, store conditional of R1 back into the variable, and now we need to check if the R1 as a result of the store conditional became a zero, in which case somebody else was trying to do the same thing, and we didn't succeed in doing this atomically, in which case we just try again. So eventually we will succeed in this. We will load and we will manage to store before somebody else beats us to it. So if another thread is doing the exact same thing here, let's say we both load. Now both of us link to the variable. We both increment. We both stores. Whoever does the first store will succeed. Whoever does the second store is going to fail because by that time their link is broken by the first store. So that's how, for example, we can do atomic increments and all sorts of other things that involve only one memory location. So very simple critical sections like this can actually be directly implemented with load link store conditional without even needing locks anymore. We can use load link and store conditional directly on the variable itself and we no longer need an actual lock around it. For more complicated critical sections, such as those that access multiple variables, however, load link store conditional doesn't work well. But we can still use load link store conditional to actually implement the lock variable here without needing complicated algorithms.